Kiura Tato, Rarangatira Ma, No Mai Hari Mai. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this University of Auckland Postgraduate Information Cocktail Function. My name is Professor Gregor Costa, and I am Dean of Graduate Studies. It gives me particular pleasure to welcome this evening all of you who are postgraduate and prospective postgraduate students. Welcome also to our university staff and our three guest speakers, Professor Peter Gluckman, Angus Blair and Zoe Wilson. Before I start, I need to advise you that we are filming this function this evening and we will use this footage on our website to promote postgraduate study. I have been advised that if you do not wish to be filmed or photographed, then could you please move out of shot and alert the cameraman. I guess that means to say that if you see a camera pointing in your direction and you don't want to be caught, it's okay to duck. <laughs> Deciding whether to undertake postgraduate study and where to study is probably one of the most important decisions that you will make that will shape your life's direction. In choosing to study at the University of Auckland, you are choosing to come and study at one of the world's leading teaching and research universities. As you know, the University of Auckland is ranked in the top 1% of the Times Higher Rankings and out of 7,000 universities internationally. One third of New Zealand's 600 top ranked researchers are located here at the University of Auckland. A choice to be at a university with an excellent reputation for the quality of its staff is in itself an excellent decision. We belong to two university networks internationally, Universitas 21 and the Association of Pacific Rim Universities, APRU. U21 is an international network of invited research intensive universities that cooperate towards high institutional and educational and in outcomes and international visibility. APRU is a consortium of 37 universities located around the Pacific Rim. The University of Auckland also has memoranda of understanding with over 120 universities worldwide. As New Zealand's premier research-led university, we have 40 units and centres of research excellence and we host four of the national centres of research excellence, the CORES, giving an opportunity for postgraduate research students to participate in leading research. The university provides a, an extensive package to support postgraduate students including masters and doctoral scholarships, postgraduate research student accounts for doctoral students, completion awards for those doctoral students who complete their research within four years, domestic fee rates for international doctoral students, assistance with accommodation, and lastly, generous funding for research provided through the Faculty Research Development Fund. So why undertake postgraduate courses or research. I believe it is about pursuing your passion, pursuing your interest in a supportive environment in an excellent institution that will help you achieve your dreams. I would now like to say a few words to those who are considering an academic career. There are significant opportunities coming in the future with the retirement of us baby boomers as we move on. Life as an academic offers a stimulating environment in which to undertake research and teaching in order to grow knowledge, challenge thinking, and work with exciting people who want to make a better world. And indeed, it is your opportunity to make your mark on the world. I recommend that you undertake your doctoral degree at the University of Auckland and then consider postdoctoral study overseas. Our staff will be able to assist you to find a post at one of our partner universities internationally. And now to tell you about the excitement of research and achieving dreams, I would like to introduce distinguished professor 
Peter Gluckman, Professor of Paediatric and Perinatal Biology and Director of the Liggins Institute. On Wednesday this week, it was announced that distinguished Professor Peter Gluckman has been appointed by John Key as the first Prime Minister's Chief Science Advisor. His appointment to the role reflects his distinguished research career and contributions to the New Zealand and international research and scientific community. He is a distinguished companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit for service to medicine and in 2001 he was awarded the Rutherford Medal, the top science award in New Zealand. He is a Fellow of the Royal Society of London and the only New Zealander elected to the Institute of Medicine of the National Academies of Science in the United States and the Academy of Medical Sciences of Great Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Distinguished Professor Peter Gluckman. Thanks, Gregor. Um, I'm going to have to focus my talk largely on science students and uh, because I know far more about science than I do about the humanities, so I apologise for those who see that what I say has a slightly science orientation. There are three important decisions you're going to make in your life. Who you choose to live with, you're buying your house, and your graduate student supervision. <laughs> and I mean that last one very seriously. I think that one of the things that students don't realise is how much your supervisors will be your mentors for the rest of your life if they're a good supervisor. And even now, and what happened to me in the last week, I was talking to the person in Sanford, and choosing to take that job, I was talking to the person who was my fellowship supervisor in San Francisco 35 years ago. We still have that close relationship, and he continues to be my mentor. And the point I want to make is that your career is partly built on your own capacities, but it's also built on whom you know. And the people who help you build those networks are good supervisors. The University of Auckland is full of people who have good international links, who have high reputations in their own regard. And when you're choosing to study, I say to students, first of all, choose the kind of person that you want to work with, who you want to be a mentor, who you feel is able to help your career in time develop through networks, through relationships, be it in the academic or in the private sector, rather than the experimental field. The field will come, but remember, if you're a scientist, 90% of what you do in your PhD or your masters in 10 years' time will be irrelevant because the science will have been moved on and you'll be in a different field of endeavour. Just because the, 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 a project sounds exciting, it may not necessarily be that will develop your career well. Now, why undertake research? Well, there's many reasons to undertake research. But fundamentally, whether you're in the humanities or whether you're in the sciences, it's about using being able to be creative. Because in fact, that's what research is. It's a manifestation of creative use of the brain. Whether you're an artist or a scientist, fundamentally, I think it's not much different. You're able to indulge in, your, in using your own imagination. The problem, as you're going to find out, is masters and PhD research is hard work. You're going to go through long periods of disappointment. Every student goes through a period of negativity, oh, it's a waste of time, I'm not getting anywhere. Because research is about 90% getting the question right, getting the experimental design right, solving the experimental problems and the design problems, and then in a rush, you get the results, and then you're excited, and then the real research starts, and most students forget that, that's writing the research up, not as a thesis, but in a form where other academics can see it as scientific papers. Because at the end of the day, if you're a scientist, 
It's not the thesis that counts, I hate to say it, but only two people are going to read your thesis, your mother and the examiner. It's the scientific papers that they will read and which your career will be built around. Now, I'm not going to dwell on my own research in any great detail, except to say that I can't think of anything else that's given me more pleasure over many years than seeing young people come into my lab, or the lab in the Institute, struggle to try and find what, to make sense of what they're trying to do, go inevitably through a period of depression, because it's not working, then come out the other end to find that they've made a real contribution in many ways to the biology of improving the human condition, and then go off to make their own careers. We have students who are now professors in this university. We have had students who are now in very distinguished positions in drug companies around the world. We have students who've, who've uh, gone to very prestigious universities all around the world uh, as fellows and now faculty members. I'm not going to dwell on the Liggins Institute because that's not my function tonight, except to say what we've tried to do in the Institute, which is a medical research institute focused on the issues around a poor start to life, is create a very special environment. Most research institutes focus on they're just molecular biology or they're just cancer research or something like that. What we've tried to do is create a multidisciplinary environment from mathematical biology through to public health and economics research with a lot of molecular, cellular and human biology in between. And I say that because I think one of the beauties of this university is it's a very complete university and I think one of the strengths of New Zealand science, which is not possible in countries like the United States and the United Kingdom, is you can undertake interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary study. Small countries enable a physiologist to talk to an engineer, an engineer to talk to a chemist. It's not so easy in big, in big countries for that kind of funding to occur. And as a result of that, there's far more interdisciplinary activity in this university than in most universities. And as interdisciplinary activity is the way science is going, I think those of you who have chosen to do science or, or medical research or engineering studies in this university are well placed for the future. So I thank you for coming this evening. I probably should now make a declaration that I'm not speaking on behalf of the Prime Minister tonight, but as a member of the university, I've got to get used to all these conflicts of interest. But thank you very much and please enjoy the university. Are all the students enjoying the free drinks tonight? Fairly good way to start the evening, I think, Friday night. But I'm not going to lie, my favourite thing about these events is that I get to come dressed up, because as a postgraduate student, I don't have to wear a tie to work every day, which is a fantastic experience for anyone who spent some time in the workforce, so excuse me if I've overdone it a little bit tonight. Now, um, I'm a fifth year student, I'm a master's student, and it's my second year at the University of Auckland Business School. I actually graduated from Massey University a couple of years ago and decided to come to Auckland, um, not just for a change, but also for the increased challenges and a few more opportunities to come my way as well. Now, um, when I was given this gig, I was actually told there were five things that I should probably talk about, and one of those things was the research I did. But you see, the first lesson that I learned when I got to postgraduate studies was that you should generally avoid talking about exactly what it is that you research on, other than with those people that you spend time with. Some people would normally come up to me and say, well, what do you study, Angus? Tell me about your master's thesis. Me? I look at leadership perspective, drawing on the sociology of culture by giving attention towards elevating leadership as a strategic and moral imperative which tempers the predominance of social psychological accounts of leadership and raises questions about the links between culture, consciousness, and social structure. <laughs> that sounds interesting. <laughs> I know. But pretty soon I realized that everyone thought that my work sounded interesting. And it's quite reminiscent of when my mother used to found my healthy prepubescent interest in transforming robots. Interesting as well. But as with all things worth doing, you generally get a lot more than you bargained for. And your postgraduate experience is going to be no exception to that. 
the thesis that you actually study, as has been pointed out, is going to be an exceptionally small part of the overall learning experience. It certainly has been for me. Now, the first lesson I got after figuring out that people didn't actually want to hear about the details of organizational discourse surrounding culture, culture construction and mergers and acquisition was that I didn't work anywhere near hard enough during my undergraduate experience. So does anyone here remember what it was like in your first year of university when you looked back at your high school days and you're like, nine to three? I could have been doing so much more. What was I doing with all my time? I've got some bad news for you all. It pretty much feels exactly the same when you get the postgraduate experience. And I look back at what I was doing during my undergrad years and went, wow, I really could have been making a lot more of that. Because for a second, I just want, I want everyone to think about the intellectual transformation that has been the last three to four years, well, for the students anyway. And I want you to realize that that intellectual transformation is really just the first step in a long way. And that this next one year, let alone the next three, you'll see just as large a change in the way you observe the world and the way you make sense of things around you. So you're just on the first step. One of my heroes said that we should all try to look for smart people and hard problems. Now these smart people tend to always clump together. So when you find one of these clumps, it's usually a good idea to join it. Join it. And postgraduate experience has definitely been one of those clumps for me. The second part of his advice is that we should all try and find hard problems because they're generally the ones worth working on and the ones that draw the most satisfaction. Now, reading research is easy, writing research is hard. So it's generally pretty easy to see which one of these is going to be the more worthwhile for you over the long term. The final thought I'd like to leave all the undergraduate students here tonight is that someone has picked you to be here. There's a person in your faculty who thinks that you are better than you think you are. Now that person's probably a lot smarter than you are, so I'm gonna take their word on it, and you should too. Because there are so many people in this, so few people in this world today that are willing to challenge the way things are done, to break new ground, make a difference, and do something a little less conventional. So I don't want you to take postgraduate studies because you don't know what you wanna do with your life, but that may be the case as well. And whether you're an idealist who wants to change the world, or a pragmatist who just wants to be a bit better at what he does, or if you just have a crazy intellectual itch that needs to be scratched, consider joining me for postgraduate studies next year, and I promise you won't forget it. Professor Costa.